Eddie Chambers. What's good, Eddie? What's good, man? How you doing? You all right? I'm you know, chilling. You know, I'm just... I'm, 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 I'm chilling. All right, I'm, chilling. I'm ready. All right, so former heavyweight contender, Eddie Chambers. Um, tell me about life after boxing. Man. Well, it's not quite after, but life in the meantime has been, it's been good. I mean, honestly, you know, the pressure with boxing and people expecting, uh, you know, to be fighting and performing and to be at a certain level, you know, athletically, it's tough. It can be tough. It can be pressure packed. You know what I mean? So, in this time, I've you know I've got I've actually adapted into some some training of myself. I well not train a lot of uh, non I don't say non athletes, but non fighters for boxing, for conditioning, and for different things like that. So you know it's been fun. It's exciting. Um, I also train. I still I still do some of the boxing training as well. But I'm a huge basketball. Guy. I suck. But, you know, what the hell does that mean? You still can play. Now, as far as, like, the um, you training guys, yeah. is boxing condition the best condition that an athlete can be in? Well, I mean, in your opinion? me being biased, I would say, oh, yeah, that's the best form of conditioning. But um, I think it's just different. I think, you know, when you think of, like, basketball and you compare it to boxing conditioning, um, there's a lot of running, there's a lot of, you know, jumping, a lot of, you know, angles, uh, you know, bumping, moving around. And what boxing, I think, is somewhat unique. And I think boxing, I'll say boxing and MMA, I lump them together because there's a lot of physical, like, you know, more than just bumping. You're obviously bumping, you're holding, you're pushing, you're doing those things which take energy. But then you also take a physical trauma. You're taking punches to the body, punches to the head. So in, in MMA, you're taking kicks to the knees and legs. You're wrestling, you're being thrown down. And in both sports, you wrestle, you know, even you know, even when standing. So it's it's so much to it that you have to prepare in so many different ways. You have to cross train in so many different ways to become uh, elite condition wise in boxing. And I think it's also just being into, it, you know what I mean, just sparring and constantly being in front of another guy or girl um, and, 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 and and working against that that uh, that, that that opponent. Negative. It's it's um it's it's tough. And, I, and like I said, if I'm biased, I would I would say yeah. But I think combat training. I'll say combat. I'll lump it together. Combat training. I think is the best form of condition in my in my opinion. Now, how's the transition been into basketball? Because for me, I see a whole lot of similarities, especially footwork wise. And it seems like basketball players transition to boxing well. So how's how's it been for a boxer transitioning to basketball? Most people look at it as well, they're playing with a ball and I. But if you pay attention and you break down the feet, there's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of movements that, and it's funny, I'm working with one of my guys right now on some of the boxing footwork who is a former basketball player. And it's not as hard for him to pick it up because it's so similar in certain instances. The only difference is you ain't got to worry about traveling and boxing. True. So you don't have to keep, you know, keep, keep tight to those, uh, to those rules so much. But um, the similarities are obviously great. So it, it makes it a little easier like me. One, what most guys say when they see me, and we're talking about guys who were basketball players at a, at, a, at, a, at a pretty good level, most of them, some of them have been pros, say you got good footwork as a basketball player. But I think obviously a lot of that comes from what I've done in boxing. And I also love basketball, so I've been playing, playing since I was a kid, but not playing. Like I've never been coached mm. until I got to, until I moved up here, which was, well, I would say it was, I was like 25. So I had no, no, no quality knowledge of any aspect of basketball, like X's and O's wise. All I knew was Allen Iverson, ball handling, <laughs> T Mac, and all that stuff. I was the biggest T Mac fan, especially you know on, on his come up. But I, I didn't know any fundamental stuff about basketball until I came up here. So even then, people were still saying you had pretty good footwork and you know, your ability is not too bad. If you would have focused on basketball, you might have been okay. I think my dad made the right decision. Once I started really paying attention to basketball, my dad was like, nah, you boxing. I even asked him, hey man, can I try out for the ninth grade squad in high school? Because most of the guys were telling me, yo, man, we're gonna be ninth, the ninth grade squad will be good. Just play with us. My dad was like, hell nah, you boxing. Mm -hmm. And I had to listen to that. Is he an old school boxing guy? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, he, was, he was born in 44, but he, he didn't get into boxing until he was about 25. So. Uh, in the six, late 60s, early 70s. Oh, well, shit, that's like the golden No, no I'm sorry. Yeah, the 70s is when he really started picking it up. 
and he was, uh, I think he had like 150 amateur fights. Yeah. But he sure. stayed amateur pretty much his whole career. Um, and he was, you know, like I said, they had, <laughs> they had different ways of thinking back then, man. It was all hardcore. Um, skill was obviously a part of it. Boxing is a skill, so we don't get it twisted. But you know, it's, it's you know, stand and fight. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. You know, you know, mano y mano. Obviously, that's the, that's that's what it is. But in the new age of boxing, there's so many more more skills added to it. Mm. You know, it's like any time. It's like basketball. You look at basketball. Uh, there's so many more different things. It's always trying to push the envelopes of what's legal. You know, understand, understand what I'm saying? What you could do legally within uh, within the rules. Some people bend the rules. Some people break them and get away with it. But the reality of it is, there's 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 ways of of getting around certain things, or at least ways of expanding your your horizons with some of these uh, some of these uh, uh, movements. So, with boxing, I think it's no different. And yes, we've evolved to a certain level because I look at some of the guys who were in the top ten back in. 50s, 60s, and 70s, and I'm like, damn, he was like, skill wise, they're kind of easy for me. Yeah, but they were some tough. They, yeah. But they were tough. Yes. So you got to deal with the toughness, but I'm tough. Mm. And I came up with my dad, who was, a, who was a part of that. So I didn't re and I fought in the heavyweight division, which in these eras, the heavyweight division wasn't the same as back then. No. You know, a 230, pop, a 230 to 225 pound heavyweight was a little rare back then. Whereas now, it's uncommon to be that small. <laughs> you understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like most of those guys, six foot six, six foot seven, and, and, and 250, 260 pounds. And that's in shape, that's after a camp. And I'm 205, 6'1", generously, and that's what I gotta deal with. So my level of toughness is, is, is as the old school was. But mm -hmm. my level of skill is the new school. So I kind of mix both just just didn't work out for me because eventually size matters. I mean, you said he didn't work out, but you have 42 wins. It went, when I say from my my greedy mentality and mm. what I want, um, it didn't. Mm. It didn't work out because I didn't win the title. I I got to like I got to the I got to the biggest, the highest mountain. I was rated number like number three, I think, in the world at the time. And the only two people who were above me were. Uh, the Klitschko brothers. I think even I even passed up Alexander Povetkin when I beat when I beat Alexander Dimitrenko. So it was it, I, I was there. I was one of the best in the world. There was really no one, in my opinion, better. But then when I got in there with Vladimir, I got humbled even more. Which I've always been a humble guy, but that really put me set me back. So you know, it's it's just being where I was, getting to that point, getting to the highest of the highs was great but I felt like I could have got further and I needed to get further for me to really cement my legacy as as, as, a, as a real quality fighter and I'm not saying I'm not but that would have just given me more ammo, ammo to say that.